Missing Nimama, written by Melanie Florence, illustrations by Francois Thisdale. As you read through Missing Nimama, look closely at the artwork and watch for these words in the Cree language. Nimama, my mother. Kamamakus, butterfly. Nokum, grandmother. Tipiskau, dark or night. Natanis, my daughter. Nistu, three. She dreams and dreams some more. In dreams, she finds me. And she's just a girl again, her hair in braids, listening to her nukum, telling trickster stories around the fire, eating bannock and licking the salty grease off her fingers, leaning against a mother, her nimama, that she will lose all over again when she wakes. Tate nimama! I ask Nokum, where is my mother? Lost, she says. Lost? If she's lost, let's just go find her. Nokum smooths my hair, soft and dark as a raven's wing, parts it, braids it, ties it with a red ribbon, my mother's favorite color. She's one of the lost women, Kamamakus. She calls me Little Butterfly, just like me mama did before she got lost. Taken, taken from my home, taken from my family, taken from my daughter, my Kamamakus. My beautiful little butterfly, I fought so hard to get back to you, Kateri. I wish I could tell you that. And when I couldn't fight any more, I closed my eyes and saw your beautiful face. My teacher said that my blue dress is pretty. I drew a picture for Nukum after we had a snack, and Miss Howard said it was beautiful. She taught us a song about rainbows at school. I sang it to Nokum when she picked me up, and I gave her the picture I drew. Going to school is even better than I thought. I can't wait for tomorrow to come. She looked so small, standing beside her grandmother holding her hand so tightly. I wish her other hand had been in mine as the three of us walked her into her classroom to meet Miss Howard. I knew instantly that Kateri would adore her. I'd worried that she'd cling to her new coom, but she kissed her goodbye and flitted away to explore her class. My class is making cards for Mother's Day. Drawing hearts with waxy crayons and pasting bright tissue paper flowers with white glue that smells funny and drips in thick globs onto their desks. Maya draws stick figures on her card. A little girl in a bright yellow dress just like hers a smiling woman stands beside her. Mommy, she slowly writes in block letters, her pink tongue poking out as she works. She sees me watching and stares down at my blank paper. You don't have a mommy, she says. Yes, I do, I tell her quickly drawing my own stick figures and trying hard to remember her smile. 
My heart aches for her, my beautiful girl, my kamamakus. I will always be your mother, Kateri, even if I'm not there, sleeping, dreaming of you, while you make me a special surprise breakfast with a card on a tray. Even if you sometimes forget my face, just look in the mirror, my love. You have your mother's smile. Nokum is teaching me to make fry bread. I help to measure flour into her mixing bowl. Your mother loved to cook with me when she was your age, she says. Does ni mama speak Cree? I ask. She does, Nokum says, just like you. Did you tell her trickster stories, like you tell me? Of course, Kamamakus. She liked Wiskakakak stories best. Just like me, I say. Did you teach her beadwork and shawl dance? I did, Nokum smiles at me. Your mother is a beautiful dancer, Kateri, just like you. Can we look at your photo albums, Nokum? I ask. She wipes her hands and takes one off the shelf. I climb off my chair and onto her lap and turn the pages. Looking at my mother when she was little, she looked just like me. Thank you, Nimama. Thank you for taking on my child, though you were finished raising your own years ago. Thank you for cooking and cleaning and doing laundry and buying birthday gifts and drying tears, for loving her unconditionally. Thank you for telling Kateri about me, for sharing stories about her mother with her for reminding her how much I love her, for not letting her forget me. Nimama! My heart beats like a drum. Mommy! But Nokum comes instead, because Nimama is lost. Shh! Kamamakus. I'm here. Nokum smooths my hair back and wipes salty tears off my cheeks. It was just a dream. Please leave the light on, Nokum, I beg. I don't like the dark. So dark. Dark in the room he took me to. Dark when he left me. And so dark after, I never saw a light or a tunnel, only darkness, until my daughter's voice called me back. I smelled your perfume today, Nimama. The wind blew just right, and I caught a quick hint of white musk. I was in the garden, picking beans for Nokum. And I swear I heard you laugh. I turned, half expecting to see you. Arms open, telling me that you were home. But there's no one there. And a moment later, your perfume was gone too. But I know you were there for a second. I'm here, Kamamakus. I've never left you. When you feel me with you, I'm there. You're never alone. Your mother is still watching over you. There was a surprise waiting on my bed when I got home from school today. The most beautiful dress 
I've ever seen, all golden and soft and swirly. I tried it on and stared at myself in the mirror, then floated down to the kitchen where Nokum was making dinner. I threw my arms around her, breathing in the familiar scent of lavender soap. My heart aches when I see them like this. There's no room for me in that embrace. I wasn't the one who found the perfect dress for her first dance, but I have to smile. You are so wonderful with her, mother. Never doubt that you have done your very best to raise an amazing woman for both of us. I can't stop smiling from the moment I met him. I haven't been able to wipe the smile off my face. I feel all of those fairy tale feelings when I'm with him. You look like her, he said, pointing at your picture. I wish you had known her, I said. He kissed my hand. I do know her, cat because I know you. You'd love him, Mom. It's not fair. I lost everything that night. I had people I loved, people who loved me. I deserve more than to watch from a distance. Her newfound love only reminds me of everything I've lost and all that you will still discover. Oh, be happy, Kateri. Be happy enough for both of us. Everyone is waiting, shifting on their fold-out chairs, fidgeting, chatting, smiling. I take a deep breath and adjust my veil, then smile as my nokum walks into the room. She holds out a small blue box. It was your mother's. She smiles, still sad after all these years. Your father gave it to her. I kiss her cheek and hug her clothes. Thank you, Nokum, for everything. She holds her arm out to me. Time to walk you down the aisle, my girl, she says. She's so beautiful. This breathtaking young woman. I can't believe this is my little girl, my kamamakus, walking down the aisle, wearing my necklace, my daughter, whose life will be so different from mine, my daughter, who has made me proud every moment of her life, my daughter, who gets to live happily ever after. I let out a long breath, trying to imagine the baby fluttering inside me. I run my hands over my flat stomach and picture it large and round. I close my eyes and imagine our baby with my nose and Daniel's light hair. I'm going to be a grandmother? A no -kum? I still remember you moving inside of me, kicking me. I would rub my stomach while you poked me with a foot or an elbow. I sang to you, to the thought of you, the dream of you, 
rocking and singing, aching to hold you, my little butterfly. You're going to be a wonderful mother. I wasn't expecting to see so many people here, holding signs, wearing t-shirts, sharing stories. I'm surrounded by the faces of so many Aboriginal women who never came home. Stolen sisters. I hold my own sign, my own lost loved one. Mi mama, Ayanna Cardinal, missing, lost. So many faces, so many lost souls. So many people left behind, wondering if their loved one will ever come home or having to live with the knowledge that they never will. Too many lost and not enough who care. Once upon a time, there was a girl, a little butterfly, who flew to the phone every time it rang hoping against hope that her mother was coming home. The phone rang today. I didn't run. I'd stopped running long ago, hoping against hope. We found your mother, they said. My heart nearly pounded out of my chest for a moment, hoping against hope. But I knew she was gone. I'd known for years. Still, I cried. I'm so sorry, Kateri. I wish there could have been a happier ending for you. I wish I could have come home, but I'm here. I've watched you grow up into a beautiful, kind, wonderful woman. I'm at peace with that now. It's not the ending we dreamed of. But it'll be happy enough, Kamamakus.